said late last year that I would report the true state of government finances if I became Minister of Finance to report, in effect, what we found under the hood once we got in office. Before doing so, I should point out that the previous government never released the audited financial statements for the year ending March 31st, 2012, nor did it release a September 30th mid-year report on government finances. So we have some catching up to do. Now for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2012. Total revenue raised by the consolidated fund for fiscal 2011-12 was approximately $914.2 million, down 82.5 million, or 8.3% from the previous year. Revenues were below the original budget estimates by approximately $25.9 million, about 2.7%. The weakening economy and the rollback of payroll tax rates were the principal reasons for the reduction. Current expenses for fiscal 2011-12 were down, where, excuse me, where one and a quarter billion dollars, down 2% on the previous year, a far smaller decrease than the decrease in revenues. The all-inclusive results from government operations, both current and capital, for the year ending 2011-12 was a deficit of $343.2 million. Now, there are many non-cash expenses included in this figure. If we strip those away, the cash current account deficit, which is virtually on the same basis that is shown in the budget book, that deficit was $169.9 million. Capital expenditures for the year on a cash basis were 51 million. Therefore, the combined cash all inclusive deficit for the year ending March 31st, 2012 was $220.9 million. Net public debt, which excludes guarantees and is net of the sinking fund, increased by $220.9 million to stand at $1.236 billion dollars. This represents a 23.4 increase from fiscal 2010-11. So whether on a cash basis or accrual basis, these deficit levels are not only unsustainable, but economically and fiscally imprudent. We move on to the mid-year report for 2012-13. In the 2012-13 national budget, the revenue target is $909.6 million. Current expenditure, expenditure target, including debt service, is $1 billion. Capital expenditure is $76.1 million with a borrowing requirement of $172.1 million, that's equal to the projected deficit. Now looking at the mid-year report, we see that revenues, actual revenues for the six months ending September of 2012 were $412 million. This is $9 million lower than mid-2011. Revenues are tracking approximately 4% below budget estimates. The reason for this slippage relates to weakness in the collection of customs duties. Taking this data into account, the Ministry of Finance estimates that revenue for the current fiscal year on a cash basis will be between $870 and $890 million. Mid-year current expenditures, excluding debt service, 
was 477 million. This was 3 million lower than the last fiscal mid-year number, but 1.7% above budget. Mid-year capital expenditures were $28 million, roughly the same as mid-year last year. Total current and capital expenditure to date, excluding debt service, is $3 million lower than last year's spend. On September 30th, 2012, government debt totaled net debt, excluding guarantees, increased by $154.3 million in the first six months of the fiscal year to stand at $1.39 billion. Now we dispense with all the numbers and we get on with looking forward. Major changes have to be made in the way we approach the handling of public money. I'll outline a few right now. A. More discipline must be enforced within government insofar as budgets are concerned. Going forward, budget allocations to ministries and departments will be ironclad. B. Ministries will be required to enhance their monthly reports of their expenditure versus budget allocations so that slippage can be arrested before they become problematic. C. Planning for the establishment of the Spending and Government Efficiency Commission, the SAGE Commission, so-called, is well underway, and the members will be announced shortly. D. A budget implementation group, big for short, will be established at the civil service level, <coughs> headed up by the financial secretary, to ensure that members of the civil service are motivated to deliver on the mandates of the budget and the recommendations of the SAGE Commission. E. Now 46.8% of government expenses are related to employee compensation and benefits. While keeping our promise not to lay off any civil servants, the situation calls for shared sacrifice Cabinet has led by example <coughs> by taking a pay cut, and we will be commencing discussions with the relevant unions to identify strategies to reduce personnel costs throughout government, including Quangos. F. We will establish a new set of rules, limits, and targets that will govern government debt and expenditure. The inescapable reality is that Bermuda's present economy cannot carry the government as it is presently structured and sized without implementing crippling tax increases. Your government does not want to go this route. Rather, we will focus our maximum efforts to streamline and deregulate the economy and implement the stimulus measures that we outlined in our jobs and economic turnaround plan. The immediate need is to grow the economy in ways that increase the amount of job creating dollars in the economy and therefore revenues for government. This government is committed to changing the trajectory of deficits and debt going forward by implementing the measures just mentioned and also others. However, in the meantime, we have to keep the government running. We still have to pay salaries. We have to provide services. We have to pay bills. The deficit and debt momentum has been building for years without check, and reducing them will take time, much as it takes time to stop a cruising super tank. 
I regret to report that under these circumstances, further borrowing will be required. Therefore, the legally binding debt ceiling will have to be raised during the upcoming budget session. A number has not yet been set, but it will be accompanied by new rules and plans to make it a meaningful ceiling rather than a meaningless one that is ratcheted up every year.